All right, let's talk cups. The majority of people welding aluminum use a standard number five like this. And for thicker stuff, they'll switch up to a number seven. The reason they use a standard is it seems like it controls or stabilizes your arc better. So you get a real tight arc. So you can get a tight bead with this when you're in like a fillet weld uh, compared to using a gas lens. A gas lens, your arc is almost wider. So its melting point is wider. And so you'll get like a wider bead profile. I like using a gas lens with a number seven cup on it. Um, it just makes a way nicer bead to me. The only thing is you got to learn how to control it. And every once in a while, for some reason, it'll wander even more than usual. And then I'll switch to a standard and then switch back and see if my machine is uh, uh, acting better. Now for me, I have two real tungsten choices that I use. I use lanthanated, either 2% or 1.5%. And Weldporn sent me these. These are um, Multimix, the pink tungsten. And these are pretty good. They, um, they last a lot higher current than lanthanated, but they don't have as positive as a strike. So like when you light up, you really gotta scratch it to get it going. And, but they do last a long time. Also, if you're trying to ball them up, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it just right. Lanthanated is a lot easier. Um, you can also use seriated. Uh, the problem that I have with seriated is that it'll start cracking on you over time and then you'll start getting a, uh, a wonky uh, arc on it. So I usually use either lanthanated 2% or 1.5% and I've been using this pink stuff and I do like it. But for beginners, probably that lanthanated so on this machine, it's got AC and DC current right here. And right now it's set to DC, so that's for your regular steels. And if you're going to be welding aluminum, switch it over to AC like that. If you have a synchrowave or something similar, a lot of times they'll have a handle right in the center. And you turn it up to the squiggly line, and that's your AC. So on this one, this is your main current, so your main amps. I usually max out whatever I can to the thickness of the tungsten, so I'm using 332, um, and that's usually good to around 210 to 220 amps. Uh, this is a 200 amp machine, so maxing it out 200 amps. And then this is for pulse only, not going to be using pulse, so leave that off. All right, AC frequency. Um, if you have an inverter with, uh, and it's capable to adjust this, I usually leave it between 60 and 120. That's the good range that I've found. Basically, it's the less amount of frequency you have, the lower frequency, uh, the wider your arc, and the less control you have over it. So it's going to be like a wide bead and kind of dancing around, but it will give you more heat that way. And then the higher you go on your frequency, the tighter your bead is, but the more annoying it is. So if you need intricate stuff, turn it up. If you need regular like outside corners or just whatever, down around 60. And then cast, I'm usually way down here, just so I can get some more heat. So AC balance. I usually have it around 35% on this machine. Um, it changes to the material that you're welding. A lot of times, if it's like super, super clean, you might be able to get away with 20%, but I doubt it. It'll probably be more like 30. Um, but I, all I do is I start welding and see how it's reacting. And when I'm done, I'll look at that cleaning line also, you get the white etch on the sides. And if it's touching that puddle, you need to up your um, balance. So some machines are backwards from this one. You know, it might say 100% over here, vice versa. And the way that you figure it out is you turn it all the way one way, step on the pedal, 
and then spin it the other way, step on your pedal, and the way that your tungsten balls up or disintegrates, that's your positive side. So this would be my positive side over here, this the negative. And if you have like a synchro wave, um, they have an AC balance, it's called dig on there, but you should leave it around six or seven if you have it on that, because you can use it to ball your tungsten, that's what I do at work, uh, but it uses some weird way of um, doing the AC balance, so if you're over seven, if you're like around nine, it really messes with your puddle and you get these really high ridge sides with a deep in cave on them and it just it's not a very nice weld so if you're having that problem that might be it I leave it on six sometimes seven if I need like an extra 10 amps but I don't want to tungsten up uh, but yeah leave it near the middle on those machines on your regular transformer ones because it really messes with your puddle once you go above that. And the way that I go about finding my uh, preferred cleaning number is I'll set it on one and weld and I'll look at that cleaning action and if the white line is dipping in and out of that uh, puddle you need more cleaning and if it's super wide you don't really need that much cleaning, but if you like it, leave it. Now, if you've ever had trouble putting your tungsten in there, it's like really tough. Uh, what you can do is tighten this back cap all the way down and then loosen it just barely. And that'll give it enough room to slide in there. Because sometimes if your collet's messed up, it won't let it in there. Um, because uh, that collet's going to be like jacked up to one side or down. So if you tighten it and then loosen it just barely, it'll give it enough room to slide in there. Alright, gas flow rate. Now with aluminum, you don't need very much gas flow. So I'm running number 6, so I should be on about 12. Uh, if you double the size of the cup, that gives you a really good range for your CFH. Um, with a number five standard, you can be down around 10. This one's a little lower than what it actually says, so I'm probably around uh, 10 to 12 right here. You just kind of got to feel it out and see what works. If you're not getting good gas coverage, then turn it up just a little bit. But try and keep it real low, and aluminum loves that. All right, filler rod choice, just real quick. So what I like to do, if I'm running 5356 like this, I like to tungsten match. So if I'm running 332 tungsten, I'm going to be running 332 filler rod. But if I'm running uh, 4043, I'll size up. So I'm running 332 tungsten, I'm going to be running eighth inch filler. And that seems to work really well for me. If it's something smaller and you only need a 16th inch tungsten, then a 16 inch filler for 5356 will work fine. And a uh, 332 filler for 4043 will work fine. And that's the best way that I've found for that. Um, occasionally, I'll run 8th inch 5356 with 332, but that's usually if it's like a quarter inch a uh, thick piece of material and I really need to get some filler material in there. Super dirty. Look at the etch line. See how it's eaten the puddle basically and on the top side it's non-existent. Balance needs to go up. You can see it's still doing about the same thing. It's a little cleaner, but as I'm welding, I can see a lot of crud flowing into the puddle. A little better. You can see it's starting to get shinier, but there's still a bunch of crud flowing into the puddle. About the same as the last. I need to turn it up a little more. It's still kind of cruddy flowing in there. I 
we're going to turn it all the way up to 45. Close. I can still see that etch line's wanting to go into the puddle. So, I guess this piece is really good. Turn it up to 55. Tungsten probably won't last. There we go. See how shiny that one is compared to the other ones? That's what I like. Now I could probably run 30% on here if I clean this material. But if I'm just messing around at home, I'm not gonna clean it. So this was that first one. You can see it like almost had no cleaning action through here. And you can see it slowly get better until we have this. And this is what I like. This is a nice clean puddle. It might be more uh, of an etch zone, but I would way rather have it nice, clean, and shiny like this than even grayed out like this or like that. When I ball up my tungsten, I like to um, sharpen it like that, have it just real, a real sharp tip or steep tip, and then I blunt off the end when I run it up against the sander. And then what I do is I hold dead center above just a thick piece of aluminum. And then I'll just, uh, I have it turned all the way on the, to the positive side so it'll melt that tungsten. And I just work the foot pedal, I kind of bump it back and forth until I get the ball that I like. I want it to wrap around that whole tip and basically be flush on all sides. Everyone likes it differently. I've seen people sharpen their tungsten real long like they would for steel. And then they'll ball it up to where it just got a itty bitty ball on it and that's good for inverters um, and this is if you don't want a sharp tip like I I'm partial to the ball because I've been doing it for so long on a transformer machine so this is what I like to do And that's about the tip that I like. Just a real nice ball, even all the way around. And this also helps so that if, instead of letting it ball as you're welding, that'll have it sometimes tip down towards gravity or sometimes, if, like if you're using that pink trimix or multi-mix stuff from weld porn, uh, if you let it ball how it will, it'll get these nodules on the end that kind of shoot off in all directions if you don't ball it like this.